covering the islands of the Bahamas. ZNS Network presents The Bahamas Tonight. Good evening and welcome to The Bahamas Tonight Weekend Edition. I'm LaDawn Davis. As always, it's great to have you ending your weekend with us. Topping the news this evening, Minister of Education, Science and Technology, the Honorable Jerome Fitzgerald, along with education officials, have been visiting schools throughout the country, making assessments on what repairs are needed, particularly Family Island schools that were adversely affected by Hurricane Irene last year. Today, during a press conference, the minister told reporters that work is progressing well and a number of contractors have already completed their scope of work in time for the new academic school term. Some $4.5 million will be spent on school repairs this summer, providing employment opportunities for an estimated 800 persons. With work already underway, officials say 400 jobs will be here in New Providence, 200 in Grand Bahama, and another 200 in the Family Islands. Minister of Education, Science and Technology, the Honorable Jerome Fitzgerald, says he is pleased with the work being done so far. I am ecstatic that we were able in New Providence to add a loan 20 new contractors to the list of contractors at the Ministry of Education. It is important to note that of the 74 contractors awarded contracts to do school repairs in New Providence, 47 of those had not had any work over the past five years within the Ministry of Education. By this act on our part, we have empowered many, many, many contractors and given them an opportunity to be re-engaged in the construction field. After closing out the old budget in June and allowing a senior manager of the ministry to go line by line through the budget to find unused funds, another $1.3 million was found. It is now being used to repair schools, especially those hardest hit by Hurricane Irene last year. Minister Fitzgerald not only outlined the school repair allocations, but the conditions of schools he visited. The allocation of the funds are approximately as follows. 3.2 million for New Providence, 600,000 for Grand Bahama, and 650,000 for the Family Islands. The allocation to Grand Bahama is about 25% greater than last year, due in most part to the poor physical condition of certain schools, particularly in um, um, Luther and Gregory Town, where I saw the most severe uh, damage that we have to um, relieve. We had to include that amount in our capital works, that's how severe the roof damage there was, which interfered with the bell course as well. Um, but on the whole, I was uh, pretty satisfied that um, the schools were in um, pretty good condition. Before the new academic school term begins, Mr. Fitzgerald says he hopes to visit at least 95 percent of the 164 schools that make up the public school system. The visits have not only give, given me an opportunity to see firsthand the state of our physical plant, but has also given me an opportunity to meet directly with the administrators and hear their concerns for education and the hope which our education system will provide in the future. Now, Minister Fitzgerald says he is optimistic that all school repairs will be completed just in time before the first school bell rings in September. Dozens of new teachers are expected to enter the public school system next month, according to the Minister of Education, Science and Technology, the Honorable Jerome Fitzgerald. The student-to-teacher ratio is still a major concern, and that's because the economic recession has forced parents to enroll students into the public school system, resulting in the expansion of classroom sizes. We are going to need an additional uh, 40 to 50 new teachers, um, and this is also because over the years we've just lost teachers and um, there has not really been a, a um, need, or there has not been a move on the part of the government to replace them, but we're at a critical point now. And so I will be going to cabinet uh, very shortly to ask the support of my colleagues um, to bring on an additional 40 to 50 uh, teachers which will require um, the financial clearance for about a million dollars. 
Opposition leader, the Honorable Dr. Hubert Minnis, is calling the decision by the government to stop the expansion of the Rand Memorial Hospital a bad move. According to Dr. Minnis, it's another example that the Progressive Liberal Party is incapable of rational decision-making and lacks future planning. His comments came after the announcement by the Deputy Prime Minister, the Honorable Philip Davis, recently that the Island Palm Hotel purchased under the former administration for the expansion of the Rand Memorial Hospital in Grand Bahama would be used as a hostel for the homeless. This is a senior personnel who has worked under both governments. She went there in 2001. There was, has never been any fault. Her reports has been excellent with both governments. She's involved intimately with the expansion and the redevelopment of the hospital. She's involved with the expansion of the critical care block. She knows this she knows where we're taking it. She knows about the technology that's being introduced. She knows about the one health care system that we're trying to bring, to bring forth and introduce in the Bahamas. She knows about health integration. The opposition leader is also criticizing the government for what he calls victimization tactics by the PLP on senior health care professionals in the country. Dr. Minnis told ZNS News that he was reliably informed that one of the persons affected was senior hospital administrator Coralie Adderley, who had at least 18 months left in her contract, but says the government wants to terminate her contract and pay her one month's salary. This is a senior personnel who has worked under both governments. She went there in 2001. There was, has never been any fault. Her reports has been excellent with both governments. She's involved intimately with the expansion and the redevelopment of the hospital. She's involved with the expansion of the critical care block. She knows this. She knows where we're taking it. She knows about the technology that's being introduced. She knows about the one health care system that we're trying to bring, to bring forth and introduce in the Bahamas. She knows about health integration. She is the only Bahamian who is board certified within the public health care system. Farmers around the country are once again being challenged to be more proactive in marketing their produce. Agriculture officials say if farmers were to expand their pool of buyers, their dollar amount will increase, boosting food security in the country. Carla Palmer tells us more. In the face of immediate upgrade, said to be underway soon to its physical structure, the produce exchange, located at the Potosky Dock, is all but bare this week of produce. Minister of Agriculture and Marine Resources, the Honorable V. Alfred Gray, explains. This is a seasonal kind of operation. Um, there are times when we have more than we can handle. There are times like now where there is very little to handle. I'm told that when the boat comes in the next few days, this will be a place bustling with activities. Uh, because most of the products which come here comes from the other islands, Cat Island, Abaco, wherever they farm, they send them here, uh, send the products, uh, the products here for resale to vendors and wholesalers. While Minister Gray says he's not unhappy with the amount of produce coming to market, he is, however, rather disappointed that farmers are not doing more to find a bigger market to sell their produce. Some people are complaining that the Farmers can only get $9,000 or thereabouts per year per farmer. But the government was never meant to be the agency to do everything for everyone because it cannot. And the ceiling which was set at 9000 was set because you have hundreds of farmers. If you have 1,000 farmers and each get 9000 you talk about $9 million. Just, just, just that way. So it's not easy to satisfy the economic appetite of everybody. That's why we encourage farmers to find a market to supplement what the government is able to do. The agriculture minister is encouraging farmers to grow their entrepreneurial skills, fertilizing their talents with added confidence and aggressiveness. Carla Palmer, ZNS News.
When we come back, some good news for motorists traveling on Skyline Drive. That road will remain open just a little while longer. That story and more coming up.